Michael Sincoda, professor that is, Michael Sincoda at Georgetown University. Welcome back to the studio. Good to see you. Um, Mike was talking about the unemployment rate, which is now basically, again, back to below 4% once again. So that's generally good news. The OECD is talking about having more women in Japan. They want them to be working. What is all this about? How did this come about? Well, in, in general terms, Japan is maybe similar to many other countries, but it's not the same. And especially the gender relations and gender activities differ quite substantially. Uh, and, and that can be seen both as good or bad. For example, uh, Japanese mothers tend to spend much more time with their children uh, in the early years, where in the US, for example, a parent would long ago have sent the child to kindergarten. Uh, in Japan, kindergarten is only down the road after the parents spend some time. So I, I, mean, I imagine a lot of these cultural similarities are going to be for a lot of other countries in Asia as well, not, ju not just Japan. Absolutely. Uh, but Japan is, of course, sort of the poster child in terms of developed economy. And the OECD likes to uh, use those poster children to make posters. Is this healthy for Japan? I mean, I I don't want to say that's bad to have a low unemployment rate, but there are some very serious demographic issues in Japan to deal with. There's a lot of people getting significantly older, and a lot of people say, hey, this isn't necessarily a good thing. There just isn't enough young people to replace the ones that are retiring. You're completely right with the age pyramid that uh, uh, one has to find out who is going to take care of the elderly and what is the ratio of employed versus not employed going to be. But at the same time, also do keep in mind that the way the numbers are put together varies. So for example, in Japan, you have the, the sitting dead, sitting at windows looking out and not really being employed, but counting as employees, which in many other countries, they would have been laid off and would count as unemployed. You know, we, we call that just dead wood, or, or just be, some may even call it being lazy. Um, let's shift <laughs> gears and talk about Abe. The big victory over the weekend, there's a lot of stuff that people are saying, could he do more to encourage the right type of jobs to be created in Japan? I don't think anyone's going to argue about the jobless rate at this point, but there's a lot of discussion about the type of jobs that are being created in Japan. Well, the, the basic issue is innovation, creativity, and Japan, a country which did, used to do everything right according to the books. 20 years ago, is now encountering other nations who are aggressively competing exactly in the same playing I mean, field. How, how does a government force their people to be innovative? I, I don't think the government can really force people. The government can or provide encourage, new opportunities uh, and, and encourage, but uh, it, it has to be from the marketplace to have some reasonable assurance that what's being done is actually needed, not just because it's a program of the government. I'm read you an interesting stat here. Temporary workers account for 35% of Japan's workforce. They make an average of 31,000 a year. Let's set aside the amount they make first and let's start with the temporary workers. Who are these temporary workers and does that number seem a bit high to you? Well, don't forget in the US we have a lot of temp workers as well. And the issue is really for many companies to consider, do we want to permanently hire someone? And hiring someone in Japan is much more permanent than it would be, say, in the United States, or even in, a, in many countries in Europe. And companies are cautious, and they don't want to jump into that cold water, so that's where the temporary comes from. It's just a fascinating. There's so many interesting statistics coming out of Japan. Uh, Professor Michael Sincota, thank you very much for your time. Always good to have you on the show. Thank you for having me.